Hey guys, I'm Victoria and this is Endless Startup. I will share the most interesting things from the startup world with you on this channel. In this episode, we take a deep dive into the world of the best accelerators. Why startups dream of being part of YC or Techstars allow me? What I can learn and what if you really need it? What are the differences between the accelerators and how to choose the best program? Many famous companies that we use every day, like Airbnb, Dropbox, Tribe, went through these programs when they were just starting out. Here are the top 10 startup accelerators of 2023. This list is based on French-based data, multiple rankings, and the latest news from the VC world. What's inside each accelerator? Let's deep dive. Let's start with the most recognizable name. Yes, Y Combinator or YC. I'm sure if you ever heard about a startup accelerator, it's probably Y Combinator. It was founded in 2005 by these four guys. It is one of the oldest startup accelerators and is considered a pioneer of accelerators, respected by the VC community and covered by startup teams. But why? Well, because it's become as a golden ticket if you are a YC alumni, almost every fund wanted to invest you. Interesting that in 2009, one of the largest venture capital firms, Sequoia Capital, was a leader investor in Y Combinator. Here are the terms and the conditions on YC you can see on your screen. The next program will run from June to August this year and you can apply until April 7. I really love YC for its transparency in many aspects, from all the detailed answers to many popular questions on the website to the fact that you can see all the companies they have ever invested in, what type, soft, hard industries, type of technology, etc. Here you can quickly see what the focus of all the accelerator and VC communities now and how it has changed over the years. So, on the example of the last page, Almost 70% of them are B2B SaaS, a separate category, as with many accelerators are star startups. YC has a separate page for them with detailed information about each one. Let's take a look there as well. So, top two companies, Stripe and Instacart. Stripe builds economic infrastructure for the internet. Millions of companies now use Stripe's software to accept payments. Instacart is a North American leader in online grocery and one of the fastest growing companies in the e-commerce. A couple examples of those selected for the last page. First, Defog AI. It's ChatGPT for data embedded in the app. Allows users to acquire data in seconds using everyday language. It can search and visualize data like SQL database or call logs. Finny House empowering OTs and care providers to go independent. Platform provides everything providers need to go independent, from scheduling and billing to marketing and client support. The second most popular and largest, based on the number of investments and startup launched, is Techstars. Founded just a year after White Combinator, Techstars is a venture capital and startup accelerator that paved the way for others to come. It was founded in 2006 in Boulder, Colorado by four VC enthusiasts. The big difference between Techstars and White Combinator is that Techstars offers mentorship-based accelerator program in more than 15 countries around the world. Techstars partners with various companies or government agencies to launch specific programs. They call it uh, powered by Techstars. Some shining examples, Nike, Disney, Kaplan, Sprint, Barclays, like many others during and after the pandemic, the guys recognized to work remotely. So now they offer three programs formats. Virtual, it's fully remote. Hybrid, most remote, but with some optional in-person events. And full in-person program. You can see the open programs and eligibility here. Not very convenient to be honest, but generally okay. So let's take a look at their terms of participation. In general, they are quite similar to other accelerators. Several open programs as for February 2023, Techstars Farm to Fork Accelerator focuses on the future of food and agriculture. Core program Techstars Boulder Accelerator, innovative AI enablers startups in B2B fintech mostly. 
Techstar Sports Accelerator focuses on the future of sports, ranging from new technologies to new business models. What about Techstar's alumni, Unicorn Guys? First, it's Zipline. They design, manufacture, and operate drones to deliver vital medical supplies. Zipline's mission is to provide instant access to vital medical supplies to every person on the planet. Next, SendGrid. It's an email platform. After participation in Texas Boulder, they raised $750,000. Twilio acquired SendGrid for $2 billion. Next is Tremedly. It's a mobile payment service that allows users to make person-to-person -person international money transfers. It helps immigrants in developed countries send money to their families in France. Several fresh startups from the latest batch of Boulder Accelerator. To be honest, none of them really caught my eyes, but what if one of them is a future unicorn, you never know. Here are some few weird ones. RiderQ. It improves every ride by providing a structure and guidance through the listen while you train audio lessons. Next is Mother of Fact. It connecting new moms one-to-one -one with registered dietitians for any feeding nutrition guidance from pregnancy through infancy. Maxwell. For small to mid-sized employers, it makes it easy to provide personalized benefits and rewards to their teams. Next, 500 Global. A few years ago, they rebranded themselves as 500 Global, but the world still uses the 500 startup's name. 500 Global is the world's most active early-stage investor. They founded it in 2010 by Dave McClure and Christian Tsai. Today, it leads the global VC market in exits and deal count. Its team has invested in more than 2,700 startups in 81 countries. There are general terms of 500 Global. In general, they are quite similar to other accelerators. You can see them on your screen. What do we know about the alumni of 500 Global? First of all, there are a lot of selected companies. But just as teachers are proud for their outstanding students, accelerators are proud for their unicorns, which, by the way, bring them millions in ROI. EdTech platform Udemy, founded in 2010, it helps students, businesses, and government learn new skills. Next is TalkDesk provides an enterprise contact center platform. Let's take a look together. Some fresh startups from the latest batch. What are they health? This platform for payers, providers, and digital health companies is eliminating billions of dollars in waste annually. ESOG, fintech company that provides assets, finance, and other financial services across Africa. Rocket La, largest digital platform for financial advice in Mexico. Sequoia Arc. You won't find this accelerator in any of the rankings. Sequoia launched the accelerator Sequoia Arc only last year. However, the fund itself has more than 50 years of history and a strong reputation in the VC market. A few words about the story of the Sequoia Fund and Accelerator. Sequoia Capital is a venture capital firm founded by Don Valentine in 1972 in Menlo Park, California. At the time when the state's venture capital industry was just beginning to develop, Sequoia was an early investor in Atari and Apple in the 70s. The Wall Street Journal has called Sequoia Capital the one of the highest caliber venture firms and noted that it is one of the Silicon Valley's most influential venture capital firms. It invests across all stages of startups, from seed to later series. The firm has offices in the United States, China, India, and Israel. It estimates that 19% of the Nasdaq's value is made up of firms they have had funded. Last year, Sequoia launched a new program called ARC, which is described as Catalyst, not an accelerator or incubator, focused on hot five founders and startups from across Europe and the United States. In 2022, the company hosted a program in Europe where the founders spent half a day with the Klarna CEO and in the United States where the group went to Disneyland to learn from theme park executives. They also made it time for a rise. The goal is to see an example of what greatness looks like. Sequoia plans to expand the American version to twice a year and has opened application for the first program which begins in March. 
key terms of participation you can see on the screen. Among distinctive features, investments up to $1 million and no demo day at the end of the program. Some examples of ARC 2022 Lamin Euro. This one, it recommends movies you might like. I've seen a lot of similar services, to be honest. Twain, it's an AI service that helps make your email better. And some examples of ARC 2022 alumni in the United States. First is Hallway, it's a service that creates your virtual avatar based on motion capture. You can also use your avatars created in third-party programs and editors. Rune, it's a supportive place online for people navigating complex health conditions. What all these startups have in common are really outstanding people with a great experience and outstanding resumes. MBA, serial entrepreneur, experience in big companies such as BCG, Morgan Stanley, Spotify, Amazon, Stripe, etc. Next, A16Z. It's a highly regarded Californian VC founded in 2009 by Mark Anderson and Ben Horowitz to support entrepreneurs using technology sources to build a future. This fund invests through biotech, cryptocurrency, and cultural leadership funds. They have three accelerator programs. First, it's Crypto Startup School, accelerated with a strong focus on the Web3. Next, Start Program, it's a startup accelerator for the early stage companies. And next, it's Talent and Opportunity, supports creative entrepreneurs. They launched the Crypto Startup School in 2020 with a goal of helping founders get started with a new Web3 project. Over seven weeks, they coached teams on the fundamentals of building a Web3 startup from the ground up, including underlying infrastructure, applications, and business strategy, operational best practices, and more. Last year, A16Z relaunched the Crypto Startup School and expanded it into a full accelerated program. So let's take a look at their terms of participation, quite similar to other accelerators. They are planning to record the educational sessions and make them available to everyone online after the program is completed, so stay tuned. Whether there will be a new set in 2023 is not yet known. If there is, it will probably be in the second half of the year, when it will be clear how the first launch went. The 40 founders in 2020 cohort went on to build some of the industry's leading companies. They have raised over $300 million in venture funding. The lecture series from the program are available for free on their website and has been already viewed by 1 million times by people who are interested in building Web3 projects. Tons of useful information, really enjoy. So, a couple of alumni. First is Phantom, it's a digital wallet on the Solana blockchain. Funpraise, it's an app is a cricket NFT platform where the fans can collect, use, play, and interact with the cricket through NFTs. Sounds pretty weird for me, but apparently someone is using it. Next program called Start. A better version of this program was launched in 2021 and received more than 1,000 applications. Competition was really fierce, with only 11 applicants accepted into the program. A6 in that launched the full start program in April 2022. It was intended to be a remote global program for the early stage of companies. But today, less than a year after its launch, the program has closed. There is a note on their website. Due to overwhelming interest, we are not currently accepting online applications. Next program is Talent and Opportunity. This initiative supports creative entrepreneurs with impactful cultural projects and helps them build their businesses through a variety of resources. Ten companies that are innovative in industries such as fashion, personal care, music, food and content. They only accept American citizens with a proven track record and offer them $100,000 in exchange for 7% equity. Some interesting alumni in 2022. Athletic. It's AI-enabled marketplace that connects students' athletes with potential brand partners. Sunny. It started as a formal wear brand to address the difficulty of shopping for Indian beddings from the United States and has since expanded to include casual apparel as well. 
Alchemist Accelerator was founded by a lecturer of entrepreneurship at Stanford University, Ravi Bellani. Prior to starting the program, Bellani was part of a three-year entrepreneurship education and outreach program started in the Harvard Club of San Francisco, which led to the creation of the Accelerator. In late 2013, the company entered into strategic partnership with the Salesforce, which provided enough capital to fund the program, the world's best accelerator for startups that monetize from enterprises rather than consumers. In other words, it's for the startups who wanted to target large enterprises instead of individuals. Interesting fact, they have a division named Alchemist X that helps governments and companies like Siemens and NEC build incubators of their own. What about terms of participation? Some examples of alumni. Spice.io, its machine learning startup, was acquired by General Electric. Assemblage, its real-time collaboration software, was acquired by Cisco. MobileSpan, a cloud security company, was acquired by Dropbox. A couple interesting startups from the latest batch. Agritech from Chile, Unibio, working on nano vehicles based on natural compounds to reduce the amount of pesticide needed to be effective. Flyhound, it's a public safety solution for finding people quickly. It enables public safety agencies using commercial drones to locate and identify cell phones on the ground to aid in rescue operations and locate missing people. The next accelerator is Mass Challenge. It's a global, zero-equity startup accelerator. There is a story behind. Co-founders were working as consultants at Bain during the global financial crisis in 2008 when they developed Mass Challenge. The original idea was to help the United States in the difficult period of economic crisis and to launch a social initiative, not a business. They said, there is nothing wrong with Techstars or Y Combinator or others, but in reality, there are investors who also run an accelerator. The world had fallen into such economic and social depths because of greed. The industry has changed itself through its desperation to invest. Our society has become motivated by extracting profits about eating slices of peas as opposed to creating more pie. By the way, today one of the founders, John, is ahead of his own VC and Akil works in Fidelity Investments. Mass Challenge is headquartered in Boston, has offices in Texas and Rhode Island, Israel, Mexico and Switzerland. What about the terms of participation? As for the deadlines for their programs, Israel is closed for the new application in January this year. The program starts in April. Mexico, you can apply up to April 6th. Swiss Mass Challenge accept applications till March 1st, and the program starts in June. Few examples of alumni in 2022. Cultivated Pure Science, Swiss, and Food Track. Founded in 2021, this Swiss alternative protein startup is developing an ingredient from GMO free yeast, which offers a creaminess needed for plant based dairy. Restatement The goal of this startup is to drive the reduction of fast fashion waste. The startup helps develop the so called economy of fashion by buying and selling original upcycled clothing. New clothes made from the used or unwanted material for buyers who know art when they see it. Next accelerator, SOSV, is one of the world's most active venture investors. They focus on the human and planetary health. The fund doesn't make direct investments in startups that are not accepted into one of their accelerated programs. They have three development programs, PEX, Hot Tech, Indibio, Human and Planetary Health, and Orbit Startups, Growth in Emerging and Frontier Markets. The company runs programs in Asia and the United States. SOSC was founded by Shaw Sullivan in 1995, a major figure in VC world. By the way, the name SOSV is the founder's initials and V stands for Venture. Let's dive into the program specific. First, Hex. It's the world's first and the most active preset program focused on the hard tech startups. 
To be honest, not so many such programs who invest or focus on the hard tech. Hex helps founders tap into the world's leading ecosystem for real-world product development, manufacturing, and fundraising. There are some examples of interesting fresh alumni. First is CargoKite. It's decarbonizing the shipping industry by building emission-free micro-cargo ships. This startup leverages this high-altitude wind as a mean of the propulsion, thereby eliminating the need for large energy storage. Xfuel converts biomass waste into fuel for marine, road, and aviation sectors. Second accelerated program by SOS Lee is Intibio. It's the world's first and most active precious opportunity for startup in human and planetary health. It's ranked the first program in early stage biotech. Here are the terms. There are some pride along me. The first is Perfect Day. It's already a unicorn which was founded in 2014. It produces dairy proteins that are nutritionally identical to proteins from cow's milk. Listed on Times as the most influential companies of 2022. Next is BioFluff. It's the world's first completely plant-based fur targeting the luxury clothing market. The fur is plastic-free, demure-free and vegan, sourced from organic renewable fiber plants. And the final program by SLSV is Orbit Startup. It helps startups achieve global scale by expanding into emerging and frontier markets. Orbit is the successor to SLSV China Accelerator, which was launched in 2010 and was the first startup accelerator in Asia. There are some alarming. Elsa's Peak. It's an AI app for English pronunciation, language learning platform that utilizes speech recognition on English pronunciation training and accent reduction. I suppose I should go there. Thus, Cheer. It's a B2B marketplace that connects small scale retailers with manufacturers and suppliers. Thus, Cheer's app helps retailers save more than 30% on their procurement and helps them to buy now and pay later. Next accelerator is Plug and Play Tech Center. This startup accelerator is in the top five in most rankings of all accelerators in the world. However, in my opinion, it is the least transparent in terms of format, conditions, or anything else of participation. I found the story of its creation the most interesting part. The history of plug and play began in the 1970s. The Amitis family ran a number of successful businesses in Iran. They fled after the Islamic Revolution. They arrived in California in 1979 and quickly started a number of new businesses under the umbrella of the Amity Group. In Silicon Valley, they opened a rug store, Italian rug gallery. It's a good place to meet startup entrepreneurs who have just made a fortune in their new companies. They need floor covering for their new homes, one of the things newly rich people buy. 10,000 handmade rugs, over $50 million in inventory, all sizes and shapes, including palace size, brown, square, and hall runners. Everything on sale now. At the store, the Amity brothers met Andy Rubin, the founder of Danger, when he came in to buy a rug. The sale turned into a lengthy negotiation during which the brothers learned about his startup plans. After the rug deal was done, Amity said that they were interested in investing in his startup. They later invested $400,000. Fredil, the people they met in rug store, became a network of friends and advisors, including many entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. In 1988, Amity bought the nondescript space up the street from where he ran his operations. Amity began leasing the space to startups with a small teams of up to 20 people. The building quickly gained its own reputation through the success of its tenants and became known as the birthplace of successful companies Google, PayPal, Logitech. Recently, Amazon insisted on getting shares in their next tenant, PayPal. A sale to eBay for $1.5 billion gave the Amazon a multi million dollar payout and the taste for more technology investments. In 2006, Amity decided to build to provide flexible space with no long-term leases and easy access to data centers and telecommunications infrastructure. They purchased building from Philips. They offer places 
that only logic companies can usually afford. What interesting things do we know about this accelerator? Today, Plug and Play is a platform that aims to connect early stage investors, startups, and the world's large corporations. The specific compared to other accelerators is that they focus on connecting founders and the large corporations. By the way, the name Plug and Play comes from the technology. A technology that means you can plug a new device into the computer and start using it right away. Um, there are no transparent terms on their website or even in articles on the internet, but according to the official report for the last year, they typically invest between $25,000 and $500,000 in startups ranging from the pre-seed to Series A. They also have the opportunity to receive up to $1 million in follow-up investments. Plug and Play doesn't take equity because they say that they would much rather invest fairly in your next round of funding. The most famous and successful alumni unicorns. Google, not required in the introduction, I believe, was founded in 1998. Nowadays is one of the biggest and most powerful tech company in the United States in, in the world. What is interesting in comparison with the current situation in the VC when companies raise numbers of rounds with the latest investments up to $200 million and more, Google had only three rounds, Preseed, Angel and Series A in 1999. Total funding was only $26 million. Not so much as for now. Next alumni is N26 was founded in 2013. It's a German neobank unicorn. N26 has raised a total of $1.7 billion in funding over 11 rounds. Do you remember that Google uh, raised only $26 million? Next along me is Gardant Health, founded in 2011. It's an oncology company focuses on conquering cancer globally through the use of its blood test and advanced analytics. Last in our rating, but not the least, is Antler Accelerator. Relatively young company, founded in 2017, Antler is an accelerator and incubator company based in Singapore. It has invested in over 450 startups. One of the eight of Antler's investments has failed, and they have not yet produced a unicorn or investment exit of any significant size, but everything is the future. An original born Magnus Kremland has an impressive prism. A graduate of Harvard College, he worked at McKinsey, co founded the startup Zellera Group, sold it to Global Fashion Group, where he became CEO. During his time there, he noticed how technology workers were stuck in jobs, they didn't fully utilize their talents and left to start their own businesses. Kremland founded Antler to help these workers. The first program was launched in Singapore in 2018, where 1,400 people applied and only 13 companies, 1%, were selected. Today, Antler has programs around the world in 18 countries. Terms of participation vary from country to country and to be honest, not so much transparent information on their website. But here are the terms and conditions of participation in Singapore. Application closed for now, but you can apply later when it will be open. Several examples of Singapore program alarming in 2022. Rapta is a professional network platform focused on matching blue collar and gig economy workers with a job opportunities in Pakistan. Floramis, the product aims to turn users' plant into a virtual pets and create an ecosystem to incentivize plant care and maintenance. Thank you for sitting till the end. This is my first YouTube video. Please write in the comments what is needed to be improved. And I'm also waiting for your ideas for the next video. Stay tuned. Bye.